Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. Last time we were working on this little system here called the Fart Catcher. Now, we passed off last time with some reports that showed that this system here, unfortunately, is not self-powering on duplicate farts alone. So, we got to take some things and we got to modify some stuff to make it an efficient fart collector. And there were many of you guys... Many of you guys, I kind of already knew that we were going to go this direction once I was editing the video, but what we're going to take a look at here is a very, very efficient way to filter different gases. And that's, that's primarily what we're going to focus on here. So how we're going to do this is we're going to use the element sensor uh, to activate a valve that will allow the gas to go in and out. So you can see the filters, 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 filters. <laughs> And I believe the first time that somebody actually mentioned this sort of idea to me, which is actually over here on the forums as well. So made by a member, Trebuk here, there's a, an excellent sort of guide on how bridges and fluids and stuff like that move throughout the system. So I'll have an extra link to that in the description below of this video if you want to go there and kind of read through it. You can pretty much just look at the pictures and understand what he's saying there. But I want to put this into our setup here to see just what it, you know, how it works before and after to see just how much in a real situation how much power we can save now the second thing i wanted to look at here was this gas reservoir now i know i like it because it's something new and i think it's kind of interesting but i'm not so sure it's necessary at all we could really just create a long line of pipe and store up 10 kilograms per spot and the reality is is that this gas reservoir doesn't really hold a ton of gas where art thou? In what tab? There you are. 150 kilograms. So between here and there, I can do 90 kilograms worth of gas. So if you just kind of come over here and you just do a little line like that, squiggle, it's, it's doing the exact same thing as a gas reservoir. And that would save us a huge amount on the research. Actually, it would save us everything from... It would save this entire line. So advanced research, well, obviously, you're still going to have advanced research. But you wouldn't need brute force refinement, objects, smart storage, solid transportation, nothing like that. We could just get rid of that whole thing. And you don't even need to have a tank with a pump in it. Because, I mean, while you can definitely store more, probably in that exact same area, because 20 kilograms, you know, per tile right there is, is quite a lot of space. I mean, you really could just get away with a pipe. And that's the most efficient way to do it. Isn't it, duplicates? Yes. You totally agree. All right, so let's do it. We're just going to... Goodbye, gas reservoir. And goodbye, inefficient gas filters. Get out of here. So here's the catch. You do need to have heating, ventilation, air conditioning right over here. So we would have to go through pressure management, which, of course, you're probably going to have that. You would, you're definitely going to want temperature modulation as well i mean like this is all stuff that you pretty much get so you need that and you'd also need the gas shut off so hope hope so we want that and we want that as well so see everybody's really happy about it now are they going to stay bugged no they're not okay so there's just a lot being researched last time you guys were right comment section so heating ventilation air conditioning improved ventilation you will need this in order to do what we're about to do. But you don't need all of this. Whatever, dude. Just make it. Okay. Moving on. We're also going to take a look at this gas pump to see if we can make that more efficient as well. Because there's been some comments over there about the mini gas pump. Uh, it doesn't move quite as much. But it may... We'll do a before and after comparing the mini gas pump to the big gas pump as well. But we're only going to test one thing at a time. Otherwise, we won't really know. Unless we look at a whole lot of numbers. Okay, so to set this up is about as easy as passing gas. So we're just going to put a, a gas element sensor right there, then another gas element sensor, and then if you really wanted to have another one, well, you could do that as well to sort out chlorine. So why not? We'll do that. And then in front of that, we're going to have a gas shutoff valve. Okay, so this is made of refined stuff, so obviously we'll have to put that down, that down, and that down. Goes in the white, comes out the green. So we're going to sort out our carbon dioxide, sort out the natural gas, and in this case we'll just 
have all sorts of fun. We'll make a little snake out of this. See? And uh, there you have it. A happy little snake. And then we can take this one. Ooh. And run it just like that. Bam. To the bottler. Now we have a couple of options that we can do up here. We can kind of recirculate gas in case we wanted it to go back around and it, you know, because maybe it didn't have a way out or something like that. In this system, I don't think it's a big deal. Like, I'll build up a certain amount of gas, but then I'm just going to use a bunch of it. We'll see. I don't think I need to recirculate that. But if I were going to, what I would do is I'd put up a, a gas bridge right here so that it would fill up kind of a return line, which could then go back and keep going through and through and through. One other thought I had was a gas compressor down here. So that's where you kind of loop the pipes back around on each other. So you can build up more content, I guess, more more stuff in a single pipe right there. It works a whole lot better if it's always the same gas, though. So I don't... Maybe that's for another time. Let's focus on the filter, though. Now all you do is put a little automation wire between these two. So when the first one here senses and it senses whatever gas we want to sort out, in this case I'm going to say carbon dioxide, this gas shutoff valve will turn on and then it's going to pull that gas to the right. Natural gas will be the second one. And then chlorine, if I still have some around, I'll have that sort out as well. I'm not going to do the chlorine because I didn't do chlorine in the last test. So... Just the two filters. Bert, why are you still cheering? Stop cheering, Bert. Now everybody else is cheering for Bert. Oh, everybody take a dip. I have some really weird tubes. Okay, so that's all it took. You can see right off the bat here what's going on. So once we get some carbon dioxide, you see that turned green. And now watch, it becomes active. And the carbon dioxide gets sorted off to the right. The oxygen goes out into the rest of the base. Super, super simple. All right, so I'm going to let this run for a couple cycles, and we'll see what the results are after that. Okay, so another thing you guys were talking about a little bit down here, like Michael was talking about it and some other people were talking about it, is that I should be able to just run this right to the pump and not do the ore or the, the not gate. You programmer people. I'm so not a programmer, electric, whatever... I understand wrenches. Actually, I was playing a game about programming. It was like a puzzle game. And I'm like, ah, this would be a fun playthrough. And then I was like, oh, no, this would be terrible. <laughs> you poor guys. You just have to suffer through so much. So much struggle. I'd never hear the end of it. I think it was while true. Kind of an interesting game. thought I was going to get better. Oh, that's really cold. Sorry, guys. Let me, oh, oh. Oh, shoot. Everything died because I made it way too cold. Look at the temperature. Woo! Sorry. My bad. You know, it's like 310. That's the good number. No, it's like 300. Okay, fine. How about 295? 290? Look at all this natural gas we have down there. That's quite a bit. Oh, see? Crap. We got too much natural gas now. Okay, so I'm going to have to alter my test. No, I guess I'm not. Well, the, the first question we've answered here is that, it, yes, it is efficient. <laughs> but now this pump is constantly running over and over again because I have more and more natural gas being introduced into the system and it can't get rid of it. So, it's... Ah, whatever, yo. Let's just let it run a few more cycles and count the numbers or whatever. Okay, so looking at the results of the two systems here, of how much power was generated by the natural gas generator, what we see is a, a significant reduction in the amount of power that was needed to be generated there. So much so that my base is starting to fill up with extra natural gas. We can hit the overlay here, and you know it's starting to fill up this area over here. So I actually need to, you know, use more power in order to keep my base from being overrun by natural gas at this point. So the power generated on average using the previous filtering system was 90.7 kilojoules 
So the difference in how much that natural gas generator produced was a difference of 90.7 versus 26.7. That's, that's a big, big difference. Okay, so the thing that's thrown me off here is that it's not really how much is generated that I care about. It's how much is being used. So let's just move this down and I'm gonna pull some new numbers here. Just looking at what was actually used. Yeah, you can see this, look, at cycle 25. The gas filters were using 91 kilojoules, way bigger than anything else out there. The next biggest thing is that mini gas pump. Okay, yeah, so this is a lot, this makes a lot more sense now. So the power used over here on the left, we can see on average was 112 kilojoules a day. Uh, but after we got rid of those gas filters and just ran with the, the element sensors, with the valve right after that, that went from 112 you know, system-wide down to 27.7. So that's a difference of about 85 kilojoules per cycle. That's a lot. All right, so using the exact same automation sequence here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out this mini gas pump for the bigger gas pump. So right off the bat here, you can see that it is moving a lot more gas. However, there are still spots where it's moving very little gas you know we're only talking 71.7 .7 grams of carbon dioxide so the question now becomes right when we're looking at something like this of which pump is more efficient so this uses 240 watts but can move 500 grams a second however the mini gas pump only moves it moves one tenth the gas but at 60 watts so for big movements of lots of gas, the bigger gas pump is more efficient. However, the mini gas pump uses less power. So if we're only sorting out small amounts of gas, then it's really not a big deal. And what I really need to do is go back in time and start this test over because I have to test one system to the other. So we're gonna go back to cycle 29 so you saw how I built up all that gas. All right, so there we go, a true apples to apples comparison. We're running the exact same cycles over again. Let's we'll see how that works out. All right, so here we go. We're running this guy. And you can see right off the bat, what I'm noticing is that the gas, I mean, it is not running very much. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh my, oh. Fail, start over. <sighs> Gotta go and remodel everything. Medicine, the bed goes over here because I'm gonna get sick. Then the thing goes there. And then I remake the happy little snake. Oh yeah, did it right. Bam. There's a crazy challenge for you. Try to play the game the exact same way twice in a row. You go insane. Be like, what, what did I do on this cycle? I don't know. All right, there we go. Now we're all set. By the way, thank you to everybody that's been subscribing here recently, and for those that have been subscribed for a long time. Your support is very much appreciated, so thanks so much for that. Now, let's take a look at this gas pump. The thing I saw last time is that once this pump starts running, it, like, quickly sorts everything out. It doesn't run as much as the mini pump. Uh... It's because it moved oxygen. Bro, that's carbon dioxide. What are you doing? Uh, wrong. I will get this... Right, okay. Luckily, it's still cycle 28, so it's, I'm all good. Yeah, so look at how just infrequently this gas pump runs, which makes me think that, yeah, this is going to be way more efficient. It does, however, seem to pump a lot more oxygen than it does, you know, than the last pump seemed to, which makes sense because, I don't know, it's gotta filter out the different gases and whatnot. Really working on that automation and what I'm using down there would probably make this pump quite a bit more efficient. All right, so we've just come up on the end of cycle 29. Let's take a look at that report. Ooh, interesting. It used 29 kilojoules of power. Last time I ran this test, that was 23. All right, so here's where things are going to get really interesting because the system has become bloated with extra gas. So as this happens, we're going to keep moving natural gas up high into the system and then it's going to 
come back down and then we're just going to run it again and again and again, which might make this less efficient than the small pump. Okay, so here's the results comparing the small, <clears throat> small pump to the bigger pump. So all I've done here is subtract this number from that number and you can see if it's a negative number, then it's less efficient. If it's a positive number, then it was more efficient. So it kind of jumped between uh, in the cycles there. But once we got to 33, we had a couple of cycles that were less efficient and that's became that's because that gas was backed up in the tube and it couldn't go anywhere because we weren't running the natural gas generator so it ended up running that air pump more and since it has a higher draw it it consumed more power than the mini pump which probably ran more overall time wise but since its draw is less it didn't make as much of a difference so the average after you know this many cycles right there was that it was seven kilojoules per cycle less efficient than the mini pump. So even though the big pump is more efficient at pumping in areas of sufficient gas, the mini pump for small areas like this, turns out it's actually more efficient. About the only other way to kind of adjust this, from my perspective, might be to have a pressure sensor down there to where it, it would only run once you have a certain amount of pressure where that pump can run efficiently at and then you would save power the problem is that in an open base like this if you have a low oxygen cycle or you, you start having problems with oxygen you know you run a pretty good risk of of that natural gas just starting to build up and take over your base because you know you no longer trigger that pressure sensor but does it really matter? Both of those systems that we showed here with the mini pump or the big pump were efficient enough to where it was self-powering. More than that, there was actually quite a bit of power that we could harvest off of it, you know, to run other equipment. So I was just looking at this gas reservoir again, and you can do this number to where you're kind of looping around on top of this. So you build up a lot of gas here and then what's inside the reservoir. And you can always, I don't know, it's a pretty simple thing. Mm, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Right? So if you let that run, it then goes around and starts to store up. So that's an extra 100 kilograms in the same space that this gas reservoir takes up. So it may hold 150 kilograms, but you can fit enough pipes behind it to do 250. I don't know. Something to think about. Another thing to think about is this recent update that they put out, and that is at very low temperatures, sour gas will now condense into natural gas and sulfur. Mmm. So I think we have some uh, more stuff to play with, but that'll have to wait till next time. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. This filter system here is super efficient, and the pump, hey, it makes a little difference, but it really isn't that big of a deal, honestly. The big, big news here is that, yes, if you have flatulent duplicates, and you have many of them, you can harvest power off of them and, you know, use it for something. I mean, that was like 80 kilojoules. Absolutely awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay out. Peace. <laughs> Brothgar.